Without any further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the next game. It's going to be Mocket NA versus Genesis. Take it away, Lawler and Wavepunk. Thanks so much, Axel Toss. I am Wavepunk, joined here by Lawler, up, and dude? we have a great match on our hands today. Yeah, really, really exciting stuff. We talk about those roster swaps playing such a huge deal. Two that I'm going to definitely look out for are Zane, Jackie, and Espeon, both being those new guys to that roster. Expect them to play a very huge role in this series. Absolutely. We had a, Genesis had Moses, then Moses realized he was in the wrong book and went over to Exodus, and so <laughs> they had an open spot, filled it with Espeon, and he has been lighting this team up. Yeah, a lot of scrims, like Carpet said, behind the scenes between these guys. Genesis has always been one of those teams that put in a lot of practice absolutely and you can tell that they're starting to pay that off I mean there's times where both teams look weak and I think it really comes down to Quinn if Quinn can make those pass plays that we know he's capable of mm -hmm. then they're gonna have a really good time but on the flip side you look at this Maka team we saw what they were capable of as a full squad in the Rocket Royale where Rizzo and Zane Jackie just as a pair blew everybody's mind so absolutely. if they can keep that consistency up I uh, expect a really good series. Yeah, we have two teams here that both like to kind of play a 2-1 setup with two players who are predominantly offensive players, one player who's kind of a fill-in support defensive role. Um, who do you think plays that role better? Which team you know, has, has more practice I mean, with that? We, we saw a little bit of it last week with Insolences. Like, mm -hmm. Insolences had a crazy mind game and was able to take that solo play, not only from defense, but transition it into offense as well. If you can do that again, they might have a very good strong strength Strong strength, wow. A strong a very strength. Good, a very good strong uh, transition from offense or defense to offense, which might give them that advantage. Dude, strong strength is my favorite kind of strength. Yeah. That's, that's the that's best really kind of strength. <laughs> Who are we going to jump on board with her here in game one? I'm going to have Zane sitting in back. Watch him go up early for these aerials. Maybe he can match Espeon. Maybe he can't. We'll find out. Game one here on DFH Stadium. We have Mocket in the blue with Genesis in the orange. We'll see where they go. There's a nice shot from Zang. Going to go just high of the goal. Pluto's going to try and pick this one up in the corner. Rizzo gets to it first and sends it back into the box. This has been some good pressure from Mocket early on. We'll see if Genesis is able to respond. Espeon leaves that one. Going to pass it over. See if Pluto can come up from the back. He's actually going to leave that one. Let Espeon come up and continue to create the pressure there. See if they can clear this out of their own half. There we go. There's a shot from Espeon. Easily blocked by Rizzo. Ball in the corner. Espeon's going to back pass. There's Pluto putting it around the wall. But Insolence is in goal. Able to clear it out. Big difference you're going to see between these two teams is they're already utilizing the field in more than one way instead of just going forward. They're actually taking back passes as the positioning and the possession game is going to play such a huge role with these two teams being where they're at, especially fighting for that number four spot. Good transition to offense here from Genesis. We'll see if they're able to create anything. A nice double touch from Pluto, going to put it onto the back wall. Now Insolence is pressing this one out. Quinn Lobdell getting the read, sending that one onto the crossbar. Now Zane Jack able to clear it away. No follow-up pressure from Genesis just yet. They're playing a little bit a little bit far back, you know, kind of being cautious. He's going to fill out this Mocket squad, see what they're able to do. Insolence is clearing this one off the wall. And with 3.48 left to go, they're going to try and push this one back into offense. There's a shot from Quinn onto the goal, but a good clear from Insolence. Yeah, Rizzo doing a really good job recognizing that shot. He was nowhere near being able to get a touch, rotates back outside and just waits for the missed shot. Really smart play from Rizzo, allowing zero mistakes to come through early here. We've seen two shots from Espeon now, but both shots have been kind of slow rollers right towards the goal and straight at the goalie. There's another shot from Pluto, but again, easily cleared out by Zane Jack. He's still scoreless with 3.20 left to play. Zane Cleep keeping it in the corner. Insolence is set up in goal here for Mocket. And an S, a whiff from Espeon there is going to let Insolence pick this one up and try to push it out. Pluto coming in from that third rotation, able to put it into the corner. The interception from Zane Jack, he sends it back out to the wall. Now Espeon trying to clear this one out. A nice hit there from Pluto. He went to zone Rizzo in goal, but was not able to quite get the touch he was looking for. Rizzo was able to clear it away. Big difference you're seeing so far out of Genesis is they're pushing as a unit. Oh, oh what? That went goodness. in? That was crazy. Off the wall. I didn't think he had the angle, but apparently he did. Yeah, Quinn going up, getting that angle, and actually hitting a really weird angle off that ceiling. And I don't know how that corner managed it to go in, but <laughs> flukes like that, uh, that's going to be tough. But I don't expect that to happen again. So as Mocket, they're playing very defensive, as I was saying. It's just this team on Genesis is pushing as a unit. They're putting two up at once. Right. And then Mocket has two on defense in goal. And I think that's going to spell some trouble, especially if this pressure keeps up. Yeah, just keeping that ball on the offense, just being able to keep the offensive pressure up is what has Genesis up in this series. Like you said, it was kind of an interesting kind of lucky just roll of the ball there that no one really expected to work out for them. But because they had the ball up in Mocket territory, they were able to make that goal happen. So we will see how Mocket is able to respond. We've crossed over halftime, ball lofted right in front of their goal. They're not going to get the touch they were looking for as Mocket is moving here, continuing to keep this pressure up. Rizzo gets it past one, but can't get it past Pluto. He clears it into the corner. Yeah, Rizzo was trying to just dunk that. 
he jumped and tried to cut off an angle. It made him play it to the corner, but if he would have probably rolled into it, he might have had a little bit of a weird deflection, but he needs to be careful, have this team rotate back on defense, otherwise they're going to get punished. Sloppy setup from Insolence is off the wall, gives Genesis ball control again. They have the ball up in Mockett's corner. Zane waiting for the touch from Quinn is going to take it from him and try to drive it. Pluto wins the 1v1, gets it over. A nice pop out from Pluto, but Insolence is able to get there before any other Genesis player takes a shot. Man, Plufo, wow, I cannot talk today. <laughs> Pluto moving a lot more up on offense. Usually he's their defensive player that likes to do a lot of wall clears. And he's so far actually been an offensive pressure. I wonder what they've been doing in their scrims. Maybe it's paying off. He's been doing a lot of good setups here. We'll see if they're able to turn it into another goal. Still 1-0 in favor of Genesis with 130 left to play. Ball in Genesis territory. Mockett's providing more offensive pressure. Now here's a shot from Insolence, but Pluto able to get the touch, keep that one away. Ball still in dangerous territory, and a lot of Genesis players lose. Quinn set up in goal. Here's the shot from Rizzo, but it's going to go just wide. Quinn pushes it into the corner. Mockett really starting to apply some pressure now. Look how quick they're going off of these and keeping it on this Genesis side. Espion trying to set this one out for his team. Zane Jackie sends it onto the backboard. It's going to roll it up and spot. out, but Pluto going to read it well, get it over one Mocket player. Rizzo, last line of defense, is going to try and keep the pressure up. Final minute of gameplay, and Mocket needs one to force overtime to keep the, themselves in this game. Insolence is going to send it off the back wall. Pluto waits for the mind game. Doesn't let Zane Jackie get the touch. Insolence's back passes to Rizzo, who keeps it up at midfield. Zane takes it from him, sends it into the corner. 45 seconds left in the game. Zane going to put it on the back wall. Rizzo's waiting for it. Pluto goes up. They drew out the goalies, but no one able to take a shot from Mockett. Espion sending it back down towards the Mockett half of the field. Zane Jackie sending that one up. Insolence is going to pass back and down. Espion's able to get there before Rizzo could take the shot. That ball's rolling towards the net. It's going to go just wide. 30 seconds left in this game. Oh, no, Zane is. misses on the touch there. Rizzo's going to try and dribble this one out. He's just got, they have to score just one time. This is something they can totally do. 18 seconds left in this game. They are able to pull this off. No one really back on defense for Mockett. That's how they want it. They just need to play aggressive. But they are not even able to get the ball out of their own half right now final 10 seconds ball moving on to the far side Pluto coming out they just got to get one good solid clear there's a mind game from Rizzo to Insolence can they pop it out no nah, it's hit the final second unless they get a crazy angle here it's gonna be end of game one they're keeping it alive they're keeping it towards the goal but there's the shutdown from Pluto game one going to Genesis smart job on Pluto they're just showing patience in the net waiting for the ball specifically and just hits it right on the floor don't take the risk take that first win momentum might start to play you know, a difference here, but you saw Mockett starting to come alive at the end of that game. Yeah, they're starting to warm up. Maybe they'll be able to make it in game two. A very, very interesting game we had here in game one. The only goal scored on that crazy angle from the corner from Quinn. Yeah, weird enough, too. Like, you look you look at the difference. Pluto, like I said, is normally the defensive player. He's the only one who had shots on net. Right. Only three. That doesn't make any sense to me, knowing Pluto's the one that goes up on the wall and does that Spider-Man clear as we talk, where he goes up and he clears it really far into mid. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where you expect Espeon to be waiting for it, but uh, I will say Mockett is doing a very good job of misdirection in the field. They're sure, crossing it sure. back and forth using the whole full field. If they can translate that into a goal, they're going to be really tough to beat if they keep that mo that like switch up. It's it's really tough to read those. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of Pluto's shots on the net were, you know, the, the passes onto the backboard. That register right. as a shot, but he's really trying to set up for his teammate, and there weren't any like really solid shots onto net. Right. Part of that being, like you said, Mockett's midfield defense, keeping the ball away from their own net, not letting those shots materialize. But another half, I felt like Genesis was playing a little bit more passive. They weren't up and aggressive. They weren't right. taking the shots, and they were giving Mockett the time to clear the ball out of their own half. <laughs> Which is fine, you know, it's okay to give them time as long as you have the defense back there. But we talk about it many times with Gibbs, how Gibbs talks about a good team isn't going to even allow those shots to happen in Absolutely. the first place. You want to keep that possession up on that side of the field. And Mockett did that quite a bit in the second half of that game, and Genesis did it even better in the first half. So that switch, it goes to show how evenly matched these teams are and that they're fighting for that four spots so hard. Game number two, moving on to Utopia. Have Genesis with a one-game lead in the series. We'll play all five games. Every game is worth a point. And now you got to get all 35 of your games in so we can have that final standings really line up properly. Zane with a great setup there. And Rizzo came in, tried to get the dunk in, but just, just barely going off the corner. Shot, good placement on him, trying to get it in there. But even better, hustling back onto defense to make sure that breakaway didn't come through. Absolutely. But they're going to put it right back in. You see these teams go back and forth so much. I cannot wait to see how these guys are going to come out on top. Quinn trying to set it up in the corner. Rizzo reading it and popping it back out to midfield. Just lofting as it comes down onto the midfield line. Zane misses the touch, but he gets both Genesis players to fall back onto defense. Gives his teammates time to get set up. We'll kind of have a reset here. We'll see if they, who is able to press this one out. Pluto going to win the 1v1. He got up first. Now he's going to try and get it in the corner, but Zane hitting that one. Now back and forth on this far wall. Insolence sends it into the far corner. Espion able to clear it up. 
try to carry this one out as both his players rotate back on the defense. It's Espeon all alone, boostless it looks like, up in the corner. He's going to pop it out for his teammates, but Rizzo is able to read that easy, push it back onto the offense. Tough situation to be in, especially for Genesis in that corner alone. He's got two options there. You can either play it backwards, trying to towards his defense, but if you got two players waiting for him, it's probably going to get intercepted, or you can just take an easy shot up towards the net. Problem is you lose possession either way. Something that this uh, Genesis team needs to do is give him some support, give him an option to play with. But this Maka team has been collapsing on defense so well so far. Nice long shot from Zane, but well read by Quinn, put into the corner. Pluto going to try and set this one up as he and Quinn move up. Interference from Zane keeps it on Genesis half. Now Rizzo going to try and push this one around the corner. A little bit of miscommunication alongside Insolence is going to give Espeon some space to push this one on the offense. Espeon's got it all by himself. Can you take the shot? He gets oh it behind Insolence. Well done. Working those angles against Insolence's. Insolence's is rotating back with a very tough side here. He's either got to play the near post or he's got to play the far post. And Espeon taking the advantage of that and playing it back towards his teammate, showing very unselfish characteristics, which is what you want out of a good teammate. Willing to give up his own goal so his teammate can get it and get it. Like, it's a guaranteed shot. Absolutely. 3-11 left in this game. First goal going in favor of Genesis. We'll see how Mocket is able to respond. There's Pluto and Quinn taking some shots on the net. Rizzo with good positioning, able to block. Now he's going to try and push this one out. Gets it past Zane, or past uh, Espeon there. Now the ball going to be moving down in front of the net. Pluto able to touch that one just well enough to keep it from crossing, but they're keeping the pressure up. Pluto needs to get the touch here. He goes oh, for the block, dunk. but Insolence gets it underneath him. Wow, tie game. Good job on Insolence is there. Even though he was supposed to be the last man back there, he took the risk there for Zane Jackie recognizing that he had no angle on that, completely beelines back, but Insolences puts his body in the way and it just works out in his favor. Something that you don't expect to happen, but it's still good possession control. Approaching halftime, a tie game from these two teams. Well done on both sides. Insolence is going to clear that one onto the back wall. Espion hanging back. His last line of defense is going to try and push this one out. Rizzo gets the dunk on him and is able to send that one down in front of the box. Pluto sends it onto the far wall. Zane misses on the touch and leaves it. Quinn's able to come out, but gets the touch. He gets the touch just before Rizzo gets the demo onto him. Now they're trying to push that one out. Espion going to pass it up. Pluto goes for kind of the backwards flip dunk, but it's not going to happen. Now Rizzo able to push this one out. He's got an open line. Oh, Espion with game. the interference. Last line of defense holds on strong. Yeah, you see Rizzo trying to go for some mind games of his own, taking a break there, hopefully expecting someone to fly by, but look at that. Oh, oh just outside. Man, so rough. That was close. They were right there in front of the goal, not able to put that one in. Pluto trying to set this one down for his teammates, but everyone's kind of on their back heels at this point. We'll see Quinn trying to push this one out, whiffing again. A bunch of uncharacteristic whiffing coming out from both sides in this game. Yeah, a lot of back and forth, but here's a shot opportunity. Luckily for them, Espeon's able to get up and save it, and you see that so much out of Genesis where they have two players back. There it is again. They do need to be careful though because if one of these market players is able to swing in and take a shot immediately after that, you right. have two guys up net. Who's going to be there to save it? Right. And we saw all three Gen all three market players there pressing up on the offense. If Pluto's shot had been just a little bit more on net, that would have been the lead in favor of Genesis. So both teams need to maybe tighten up their rotations here. Zane going to pass it out to the mid. Quinn's going to keep it going, keep anything from materializing. As Rizzo picks up ball control, sends it back down to the far corner. Espion going to push it up. Insolences reads it at midfield. Zane going to put it on the back wall. Insolences hangs back and he's ready for the shot, but no one's going to get there. Quinn didn't get the touch, and Insolences didn't get a shot either. He's going to cross and fall. There's Rizzo with the shot, but Pluto with the block, keeping us tie game with a minute left. Yeah, that extra touch from Insolence is such a good idea, putting a soft little leave right in front of the net. Unfortunately, nobody there to put it in. But the defensive genesis really stepping up right now, trying to keep this a tie game as long as possible. This one is going to go to either team. It's just a matter of who gets that one shot that we're going to yell about super loud. <laughs> 45 seconds left. All market players set up in a strong defensive position. Rizzo last line in goal. Insolence gets a stop. Not sure why he's not just letting Rizzo take it out, but there we go. Finally, the clear going to happen. 30 seconds left. Rizzo with ball control. Just has to get it past Pluto. Gets the mind games, but he wasn't able to maintain ball control. We saw Genesis able to pick it back up. Espion now onto the back wall. Going to try and take a shot onto the net. It's going to drop. Not quite there. Zane goes for the block. Goes for the vector block. Not able to get the shot he was looking. There's Rizzo clearing that one out. My goodness. There's just so many opportunities we've seen on both sides, but just a lack of accuracy hurting both teams right now. Final countdown. Ball in front of Maka. Goal. Can they get there? No. Rizzo able to clear it into the corner. We'll see if they're able to make a last minute amazing effort. There's a shot, but Zane clearing it into the far side. As soon as it touches the ground, we'll be it's going to over overtime, yet. but Rizzo's trying to get the dribble. There it goes. Wasn't able to maintain it. Overtime in game number two. Smart clear on that one. Just getting it out, especially with the possession, but 
It looked like Rizzo actually wanted to keep going with it. Yeah. He was pushing hard for it. I mean, why not? At that point, you know, we could end it right then in regulation. See, right now we have Quinn with ball control. Gonna try and drag race out Rizzo for it. He's loose. Now Insolence is trying to back pass as Zane pushes it over into Genesis territory. I hate that he cleared it there. He should have actually just been patient with it. There's nobody nearby. He could have taken a dribble and maybe tried to beat somebody with a dribble, but he just pushes it inside. Oh, oh my the pass goodness. play from Rizzo to Insolence is to take game two. Look at this pass play. So that touch going over the top. But look at Rizzo, plays it easy inside, and oh. Insolence is rotating back and through to play that, place that top upper nine. What a beautiful placement on the shot. Good luck saving that anytime soon. Well, and after a full game of kind of solo plays, of sloppy shooting, of just kind of moving the ball slowly around the field to suddenly have an explosive pass play like that, Genesis didn't know what to do with it. They hadn't seen that in the whole in the entirety of the series up until now. Right, right. And you see, like we talked about, or at least I mentioned a little bit about how Rizzo and Zane Jack here are going to work well together. And Zane has actually been looking kind of flat. Mm -hmm. He's playing more of that supporter role where he sits back, but he hasn't done anything to noteworthy in my opinion to get up and make those huge plays that we know he can do so you have that other player with Rizzo and Insolence is just mm -hmm. stepping up which mm -hmm. is what you need out of a team all these players are so good and can fit any role but when one player is just not playing on step up and make that play yourself and they're doing just that it's keeping them in this we got a tie 1-1 series yep it's very interesting because we talked at the beginning about how these two teams kind of are known for running kind of a more of a 2-1 right. of having a pair that's always up in the offense and a player that's in the support defense role but so far we've seen Pluto up in offense we've seen Zane back on defense Makes I think no they're sense. trying up some new things at right. this point and it's 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 interesting cuz it's a very even series like you said all tied up 1-1 yeah these guys keep their scrims pretty quiet they don't really let us right. see all that much i mean we've been talking how uh, I got the chance of sitting down with some of the guys from Genesis, mm -hmm. and they've been talking about how, like, when Quinn's on, we're on. Right. And Quinn's doing just that. He's playing very, very well, and it's keeping these games extremely close. I mean, within one goal each, I don't know where the series is going to end up, but if one of these teams can keep those pass plays going, we might start to see some possession swinging, and then the ball control ends up being a totally different story, and then you're going to see some of these leads start to grow. But if defense on both sides keep acting the way they have been, expect close games for the Rex for the next two. And great defense coming out from both teams. We'll be moving on to Beckwith for game number three. It's raining as Espion tries to set this one up for his teammates. There came in Quinn for the shot, but he was a little bit slow as Rizzo was able to clear out one away. Now Rizzo maintaining ball control, getting it over two of the Genesis players. He bumps out oh, Espion. Oh, no. and Enzalus's shot goes just wide. Zane comes in for the follow-up, but man, that was such a cool play. It's too bad the shot went just a little bit wide of the goal. Taking full advantage. Oh, and Espion is able answer. to put a point on the board. What a counterplay. Yeah, we talked about taking full advantage of your car, and he bumps somebody out of the way to give a wide open net, just barely misses the post, but you need to be careful with that. When you dedicate to doing so, it puts you out of position, and Genesis being so smart and transitioning that onto offense so quickly leaves the shot open, and Espion gets a goal. Absolutely. First goal happening within the first minute here after a pretty slow first game or second game we just had. Pluto going to keep that one in the corner, let Espion get set up in goal. Now Quinn and Pluto just kind of uh, just, just transition behind the ball and try to push it out here. Very simple play. Now Espion passing up to Quinn who leaves it back down as Espion comes up for the shot. He gets it over Insolence's, but Insolence's touch puts it very high. Now Rizzo going to try and get this one around the corner. Keeps it away from Quinn and leaves it for Insolence's. Nice passing play coming out from Mockett. Zang going to push this one up. Insolence is going to try and get the angle, but couldn't quite get there. Espion now set up in goal. Zane's going to try and pop this one back out. Now Insolence is going to leave it there for Rizzo. Kind of run a, a screen play. See if they can kind of trick him out. But Insolence is going to put that one up off the back where they've drawn the goalies out well on Genesis. A couple plays in a row but they've not been able to shoot on net. Yeah, you see it really well actually out of Pluto. The patient game that he is playing. Wow. He has a couple times where he could really go and shove his car in the way and see if he can make something. But he's not. He's sitting back showing patience and waiting for the play to develop before he commits to it. Oh what my is goodness. happening? That was crazy. Such slow shots from Rizzo. And we were able to see Quinn get the blocks, but multiple times in a row, that ball spent a good like three seconds right there in front of the net with multiple shot opportunities. There's a oh, nice there's the beamer from Pluto setting his team up by two. Man, the rotation's coming out from Genesis. This ball gets popped up by Zane and put in a very dangerous spot in the middle of the field. That's the stuff I expect to see out of Espion, but Pluto doing it for Genesis getting up and just shoving it right back towards the net. It doesn't even need to be a strong hit. Just put it somewhere in the net that forces them to make a save. Like like Carver and them were talking about last series. When you put those shots on net, it forces somebody out of the position or the rotation that they want to go to, right. and it plays it into your hand. 
when it was a very strong shot from Pluto as well, 109 kilometers per hour, very just kind of textbook, beautiful aerial, putting his team up by two. Zane's going to try and respond, see if he can get this around, but very solid line of defense. He didn't really have any opportunities to kind of push it in. Now Pluto coming out, going to try and see if he can create some offense. Espeon set up in goal for Genesis as Rizzo tries to push this around the corner. He's going to get it up onto the backboard, try and pop it back out. Espeon very patient, lets Pluto pick this one up and transition it back onto the offense. Gets the dunk there on the 1v1, but Rizzo able to pick that one up and push it back into Genesis territory. Possession control definitely coming out of Maka now. Can they put one in is going to be the big defense uh, of question for Genesis. But so far, it hasn't been that. Like, they control it and they get these pass plays off, but then they can just get shut down. Man, that was a great play there from Quinn coming up in between two Maka players to push it back onto the offense, forcing Jane to kind of rock that one around as Rizzo gets set up in goal. Espeon and Quinn kind of up on top of each other, not the best of positionings, but we'll see what they're able to do. It hasn't hurt them just another yet. We've crossed into halftime. They're still up by two. Yeah, another back pass coming out. Really smart usage of the field, but you see this transition. This wide open field, I hope he doesn't just clear this up. He takes a little bit of time with it. And there it is. Like, Zane Jack, yeah, I'm glad you did that because you had one contesting. But with that much open field, if you would have played it to the other side of the field, right. it was wide open. Right. Take that time. I understand that clock's starting to tick down, but we, two minutes is a lot of time to play There's on the field. There's the shot from Rizzo getting his team on the board. They're only down by one. Uh, there you go. I mean, good answer. Insulus is waiting patiently over on that corner and beats them both to it. Two guys out of that rotation breaking down the defense and yet a bump coming through too, just shutting down all options they have to save that. Good pressure coming out from Mockett been loving watching this Insolences and Rizzo squad up on the offense. They've had two great pass plays now in this series. See if they are able to continue that on as we move forward. Espion pushing this one into Maka territory. Insolences plays it off the wall. Rizzo keeps it up and alive. Zane Jackie now going to go in for a touch. Does everyone want to touch the ball before it touches the ground? But it wraps around. Rizzo able to get a stop. Pluto gets it over his head. There's Espion with the finish. They can put the lead back up to two. Man, that's a really rough place to be if you are Rizzo. Rizzo sitting there, takes a tap outside, and just gets caught up in the middle of this change of possession. Coming off from Genesis, just putting on a pressure like no other. It was a great play from Espion as well, reading the way that Rizzo was going to deflect the ball and rolling along with it to make sure he was able to finish that goal. 135 left to go, 3-1 to one in favor of Genesis over Mockett. Rizzo setting it up again, but Pluto in goal, able to clear it out well. Zane Jackie gets the stop, gives his teammates time. Now there's a shot, Rizzo with the follow-up, but couldn't get the touch. Espion going to clear it away. Yeah, good clear coming out, and that's... Sometimes we talk about, and I mentioned so much about wanting mm. possession control, but when you're in a pressure like that, even just a good pinch like that, and able to follow it up from Espeon, allows your team so much time, not only to get back into a position that's comfortable, but also get boost, try to you know match the other player's uh -huh. offensive control, but you just never know. Okay, Insolence has finished this one. He sets it up. We'll see if anyone can get there. It looks like Espeon's going to be the first one to the ball and put it into the corner. Final minute of gameplay. Mocket needs two. Pluto sending that one up. Espeon going to continue to follow it and create pressure. Rizzo able to push it into the corner as Pluto moves into goal. We'll see if he's able to clear this one. He keeps it in the corner. They just keep this ball out of their own goal. They're going to be able to take game number three. Three players going up right for that one. They will come for the back. There's Insolence with the shot, but it goes high. Too bad there for Mocket. They really needed that point. Now Espeon just has to beat out Zane Jackie. Zane Jackie reads it well, leaves it for Espion or for Insolences in the corner. Final 30 seconds. They need to score now. It's popped out. We're seeing there's the Genesis. They hung back on that one. It's going to go off the crossbar. Can anyone get there? All three players got drawn out by that shot. This is a great opportunity for Mocket if they're able to press this one up. But it looks like Pluto was able to fall back. 18 seconds left. They still need two. They really got to score right now if they want to have any time to score the equalizer. Insolences passes it back, but Rizzo whiffs on the touch. That's going to leave the ball in Mocket territory. Here comes Zane, but it gets shut down by Espion to Quinn. They keep it in Maka territory. At this point, it's hit one second, and the game is over. Man, that's got to be rough. I like what Mockett's actually trying to do, like the, the setups that they have, because they know the direct approach isn't going to work on this Genesis, this Genesis defense so far. Right. They put direct shots on, and they're getting blocked over and over again. So they're like, all right, let's play the backboard. But then there's no third player to come and follow that up and take the shot. It's just the idea is there but they need to formulate an actual shot like it's right. it's just not coming together so what do they do to come back and make something happen what they're trying so far hasn't absolutely well, we've seen Mocket score twice on fantastic passing plays like we talked about the end of last game in the middle of this game if they can keep that passing play up they're going to they're not going to be able to their genesis is not going to be able to respond on right. defense that is the best way to break a defense i would love to see some more of that moving forward with the series yeah you see and then from what i've been telling is Genesis looks like they're really controlling the pace of this game. Not only mm -hmm. possession-wise is it back and forth, but they're playing at their level. Like, it's not really, really fast. It's not really slow. It's right in between. It allows these players to get up 
as quick as they need to. It allows them to contest as quick as they need to. Right. I feel Mocket does a lot better job at playing at a really, really fast-paced game. Influences, it allows him to make those baits that he does with his break checks and his good mind games. Right. It allows players like uh, Insolences and Zane Jackie to really do that kind of one-two combo with Rizzo with his good passes or even his good shots. Right. And we just haven't seen that yet. I would love them to come out just extremely strong <laughs> And on Wasteland, Wasteland, maybe this is the changeup that they needed. Maybe. We'll see if this changeup is what Mocket needs to pull this back into the series. They had 10 shots in the last game. That was the, you know, the placement could be a little bit better because it was 10 shots and only one goal. There were six saves, which was not, not that big. We haven't seen any like crazy, crazy saves right. on the side of Genesis. Most of the shots were just kind of you know rollers towards the net. So if they can get that pass play going, if they can get kind of their placement up a little bit on the solo plays, and maybe the wild card of Wasteland will make a difference here as we move into game number four. Now, a lot of people ask about these games because we are going back and forth, but this is not a best of series. All five points do matter. And these teams fighting for that number four spot especially have to get as many points as they can, especially with these two contesting as much as they have been, where these these points are going to pay down. We saw like last game where Retrospect able to get a 4-1. Right. They weren't able to get to lands because they lost out by two games. Right. So make these count. I mean, you have a chance. It's already 2-1 in favor of Genesis right now, but still three games to go. Nice clear there from Pluto. It's on net, but Rizzo is able to clear it away. And now let's see Insolence just try to convert this one onto offense. Quinn's going to ride up on the wall, try and get the read, but Zane gets it past him. Now Espion, last line of defense, able to push it up to Quinn. Quinn puts it all the way back. Pluto in net is able to put it back. Man, really high flying game we got going on right now. Ball very far off the ground. Espion going to be able to clear this one out. Zane gets the read and puts it back into the corner. Quinn comes out of goal, but there's another dunk from Insolence. Can anyone get there? Espion sets it up. Spot. It's in a dangerous spot spot if anyone's gonna be able to get there Quinn puts it up and away my goodness Genesis is very much on their back heels right now there's the shot from insolences oh. it's set up at midfield can anyone come up from that no Espion gets there first and now he's got to run he's just got to beat out Rizzo he pops it up oh but it goes just a little wide Quinn's not gonna be able to get the shot right idea playing that opposite corner trying to get a pop but the good transition coming out from Mocket now can they set up a pass play and this is what they wanted I think that's why I completely honest I think Wasteland's gonna benefit from them because those balls are automatically gonna center right. for them. So if they can just keep start rifling in shots, it might work out. Rizzo setting this one out. They're gonna leave that one, let Pluto pick up ball control. Insolences goes for the read, gets it past Pluto and pushes it into the corner. Quinn keeps it in the corner, leaving Genesis time to rotate onto defense. Rizzo pops this one out, but Espion's able to get there first and send it into Mocket territory. Now, gets it over Zane, into the corner. He's gonna try and pop this one out off the backboard, but there's Insolences on the rotation, able to clear it away. Rizzo set up in goal, a bit of bumping happening in the corner as Pluto sends that one back down to his own side of the field. Oh. Insolence is gonna send this one off the back. Quinn pops it up. There's I've seen Genesis, they've really been resigned to popping the ball up in the air just to buy themselves time to get rotated back onto the defense. And I totally agree. I mean, that's totally fine when you've got two players up, but they're defensive primarily. Like, you saw Pluto fighting two guys in that corner. Right. And they had two guys back on ready to answer it. Now, Mocket, when they clear it like that, they need that next player to come in and take a hit, and they just haven't done that yet. There's a setup from Rizzo. Insolences comes in, but Espion with the interference, able to keep it out of goal. Insolences loose in the goal right now. A good touch from Pluto, clears it into the corner. That was a dangerous moment. Mocket really creating the pressure here. We're all the way up to halftime, still yet to see any points get on the board. Yeah, very close, neck and neck, and maybe this is exactly what they needed, but that hasn't been any different from the rest of the series so far. These teams are battling it out, neck and neck, the entire time. Who's going to take these points? I have no idea, but man, are oh. these teams playing with their all. Yeah, man, they've really forcing Genesis to make some crazy moves on defense, even though they're not really taking any crazy shots. I'm not sure if Wasteland's just throwing off the rotations at this point or what's going on, but Mocket has really been aggressive so far here in game number four. Quinn going to set this one around the corner. Insolence is able to clear that one out very well. Rizzo follows that one up and bumps Pluto in the air, but Pluto does get the touch. Insolence is able to pass up to Rizzo, who sets that one up. Can anyone come up from the back? There's Zane with a shot on the net, but it does, wasn't the strongest of touches, and Espeon's able to clear it. I wonder if they can do anything with that demo. Insolence has actually ended up blowing somebody up. And with that power and that defensive respawn, a dunk coming out from Rizzo, I wonder if they can formulate something here. There he goes. He gets Another the, one. He gets the demo onto Espeon, but not before Espeon's able to clear it. Solid defense holding on here for Genesis as they move on to offense. Quinn going to try and set this one up off the backboard. There's Espeon with the shot around the goalie. Well done. Man, that's got to be so rough for Insolence as this ball gets played very well, actually, by Zane Jack. It's just that corner bounce from Wasteland, and Espeon plays it far post using the advantage of the car going one way and playing it the other. Yep. Good placement coming out, and Genesis is going to take a lead here. 
You see the pass plays coming out and strong again. The lead for Genesis with 1.13 left to go. Ball moving on to Maka territory as Rizzo picks it up and pushes it back into the Genesis. Now Esselens is trying to get the touch there. Rizzo going to back pass to Zane who's coming out from goal. Gets it around Quinn. He's going to have to get this pass Espion who gets the dunk and back into Maka territory. Final minute of gameplay. Maka is down by one. This is a place they are very familiar with. They have been here multiple times in this series. Yeah, now it's just a matter of that they can get out of it. It's back and forth. Still one 45 seconds left I mean there's plenty of time to get back into it and you see that the plays are developing it's just a matter of getting that one shot and they just haven't had it yet and it seems to be the story so far Quinn taking a loose shot on the net Insolences waits it out and picks up ball control he's got the drag race going he's got a shot on the net but Pluto on the rotation able to take a shot there's a follow from Rizzo but a great touch from Espion keeping it out final 30 seconds of gameplay Mocket needs one Insolences gets it past two players he's got it in the corner just has to get it past Pluto he gets it over and there's the shot from Rizzo oh, no, getting so towards close. Zane coming up from the back there's the shot and oh my goodness Espion in goal their defense holding on strong here if you just see Mocket if they could have just tighten up the rotation a little bit they might have had it final 10 seconds we'll We'll see if they're able to pull this one off. I don't know. They could do it. They only need one. It's a final countdown. They're going to get there. Anyone that you see, oh my goodness, Quinn just playing strong. But there's Insolence is going for the shot. Pluto. Oh, the, with the block. Back the they tie it up. What a shot from Zane. Oh my goodness, we go to overtime. Oh my gosh, I was just about to talk how frustrating it's got to be for Mocket to have all these shots and nothing. But there's the follow up I was talking about. Zane Jackie taking the risk and coming up. There was nobody back. If he missed that, they would have been in big trouble. But if he didn't make it, we wouldn't have this overtime. Absolutely. We've seen them get punished numerous times. We've seen both teams get punished by the third rotation not being aggressive enough. Finally, Zane realizing, you know what? It's all on the line. I got to do it right now. He's able to be there, able to make the shot. And we've got overtime in game number four on Wasteland. Rizzo going for the upside down. Got to pinch off the ground. Zane Jackie going to set this one up. Pluto pushing that one out. Now Espion picking it up, sending it onto the far wall towards the net. Rizzo's going to get it first and pop it out to the far side. There's Pluto with a follow-up on the oh, net. No! What a shot from Pluto to take the win. Man, Pluto being the first one up on that one. You try to get a clear, and it plays it across goal. But Pluto waiting there perfectly on that rotation, and it just takes an awkward bounce off the teammate. Excuse me. Huh. And puts it into the back of the net and giving Genesis the win. Oh my gosh, they Man, were so close. So close. I, I, you got a feel there for Mocket getting the buzzer beater goal, and then just a few seconds into overtime, Pluto comes in with a nice aerial shot. We've seen some great aerial shots from Pluto this series. There was another one. Stepping up, man. Yeah, taking the win there. They have three games of this series so far. All three players on Genesis showing how important they are, but the same thing applies to Mocket. Zane Jackie with that goal is what kept them in it. If if he starts to cheat up, cheat up a little harder, that does two things. One, it leaves your defense wide open. Mm -hmm. So they need to make sure that insulin is normally their number one man rotates back quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think that would apply so much more pressure to where he could just stop at that mid half or that midfield boost and then put it back in. If Absolutely. they kept doing that, this game could totally change. But most importantly, this is a series or a match of five. All five yeah. games matter. They need to get the second point to keep themselves close in the rankings. Absolutely. Every point matters in this series. So we will be playing all five games. We'll be going into the fifth game here ever so momentarily. But we have ten shots again from this Mocket squad. It's to still only man. one goal. It's been They've been able to get the right. ball into Genesis territory, but not been able to create anything that's been able to get past this defense. Yeah, like I said, it's got to be frustrating. When you mm. put that many shots and they keep getting stuffed, over and Ever. over and over again. Like, at what point does the mental game come in and be like, God, this is frustrating, man. Right. What do we do? Right. And I think they found out, take that risk. Bring that third man in, put some pressure, see what happens. Absolutely, yeah. you got to change up something at this right. point. Because it's not been working out so far. Three to one is the series count right now in favor of Genesis. Game number five, moving on to Beckwith Stadium. Who are we going to jump on board with first? I'm going to pay attention to Insulas. I always like taking pay attention or paying attention to that back man because he's the one that usually has to contest right away. But at the same time, like if they keep playing this slow game, maybe we'll see the possession change right away. Pluto pushing this one up, getting it past two players. Zane on the rotation is able to clear it away. Now Espion putting Espeon's that one into the corner. See if Quinn is able to get it. Nice shot there by Zane, getting around two of the players. Pluto able to pick this one up, though. No presence from the rest of the Mocket squad. And that's fine. I mean, you saw that ball going across midfield, and really smart play, actually, from Genesis to just let the player who was moving up take it. Right. Uh, it allows them to kind of re-rotate and you know fill in the spots, but that 
that bump coming out, yeah. maybe it'll lead to something. It might be. That was a really strong bump there onto Rizzo, but he was able to recover well and be able to get a clear. And then another bump coming out from Pluto onto Zane Jackie. We'll see if Espion's able to follow up and make it worth something. He gets the get through. Zane Jackie whiffs. Where's the follow up? Oh, dear. Pluto and Quinn both go up for it. Neither one able to make the shot. Big offensive transition here, though, and able to get past one. Can they pass that inside? But no, Genesis rotating back so quickly on defense, and then they pressure it right back. Not enough credit going to this Genesis team for what they're doing on defense and then transitioning into offense. Absolutely. Quinn setting this one up for his teammates. Influences gets the shot, but Pluto hangs back and is able to get a very solid clear into blue corner. Quinn's going to try and pop this one out, but Zane Jackie over the top of him keeps it in the corner. Pluto again trying to push this one out. And there's Espion going to take a shot that's going to go just wide of the goal. Pluto keeping the pressure on, puts it into the far corner. Rizzo set up in net for Mocket as Pluto pops this one up. Quinn's going up for the shot, and he gets the angle. Oh, that oh, there it goes. What a shot from Quinn. Pluto all over the place. Look at this. So he keeps it in with two contests, one in front of the net and one in that corner. Pops it up and then bumps the Ooh. only goalie in Quinn with the rotation to take the easiest shot he's going to get all tournament. That was amazing. We've seen Pluto starting to get aggressive in this game, and it's really paid off. You know that as, as someone who plays a lot of goalie, you're going to – you get nervous when you're like, oh, I know he's coming. Dude, I know it's going to happen. back is terrible, man. Absolutely. It it's, can be terrifying. There's instances with a shot, but a nice block from Quinn keeping that one out. Genesis up again in the series. 325 left to go. 1-0 in favor of Genesis. Zane goes for the shot, but a nice dunk there, keeping that one dead at midfield. And this one's going to be popping off the backboard. Can Quinn get the shot? Oh, he pops it into the corner, blocks the shot Pluto had. But it's all right at this point. Insulin is going to be moving on to the offense, see if he can create something for his team. Yeah, good patience coming up from both teams, but let's see if this Maka team can answer. Ball going back and forth and sitting in front, but just not able to get the touch on it there. And that seems to be the problem is they put themselves in the position, but they're getting beat to the ball. Like, oh, what a shot there from Zane, just barely going off the crossbar. And there's a follow from Insolence's Espion. Patience in goal, able to clear that one away. Approaching halftime here, Zane has ball control. He's going to try and get it past all the players. No one home right now for Genesis, but no one there to make a shot from Maka. Yeah, good in its interception by Insolence is there. Let's see if he can get a dunk again. But Espion playing the slow game, showing some patience and able to pop it right back in. But oh, dear. Okay, that was a close one. Quinn to Pluto. He popped it down. Pluto was able to get it away, but there was a market player right there trying to push that one in. Espion able to clear that one away, getting himself a savior medal. This has been some very strong. We've been talking a lot about kind of some sloppy offense for market and I think we really do need to be giving them some credit for the amazing defense we've seen from Genesis all series long, really keeping those shots out of net. Espion setting this one up at midfield. We'll see if anyone can follow up. Who's going to be the first one there? It looks like Quinn's going to come up from the backfield and take a shot that's going to go wide. Rizzo putting that one onto the wall. Insolence is following up and putting it onto the back. Board. Now Pluto coming out for the shot, but it looks like it's not going to happen as Rizzo's shot goes high. There's Insolence is continuing to try to create pressure, but they're not able to create any shots on net just yet. See, like that right there. That Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Quinn is putting on a show in the game number five. All that could have been avoided if their third man, like in that corner, he's in a rough spot. Rizzo is already rotating back on defense. Zay needed to come up and pressure that. It puts Rizzo in such a tough spot, but still, Quinn showing some mechanical skill, taking the car and flipping it over the top for the goal. Giving them a 2-0 lead at this point has got to be such a good spot to be in. And not only did he juke out the goalie, he juked out the goalie on target. Like the shot, he didn't have to recorrect it after he got it past Rizzo there. Was able to put it in 2-0 in favor of Genesis with 143 left to go. And they are back on the offense again. Espion putting this one up, trying to get it over. Ball lofted at midfield. We'll see if Pluto comes up from the backfield. He's going to be playing patiently. Just sit in goal. They don't need points. They just need the game to be over at this point. Rizzo going to put that one out. Quinn going to pop it off with the Spider-Man clear. Espion keeps it set up. Quinn waiting for that one. Now Zane puts it out to midfield. Rizzo pops it up. We'll see if Insolence comes in from the back. But Pluto is already up and able to get a shot over the top. Send it onto the backboard. See if Rizzo can do anything with this in the corner. 115 left to go. Quinn going to pop it off the wall. Zane reads it. Rizzo puts it onto the wall again. And a bump onto Zane. See if Quinn, oh, he gets the backflip there. Not going to be able to get a shot, but it was a nice, nice zone there from Quinn. Yeah, and really good possession. Totally broke down everything they were trying to do. It was actually a dangerous pass in front of the mid, but that bump made it even scarier. Obviously, the field's backflip came out, but still able to keep it on the side of this Maka team, and they just look like they're falling short of everything they're trying to do. One minute left in the game for Maka to redeem themselves here and hopefully be able to take a second game in this series. Espion pushing that one out. Pluto getting the read, sends it onto the backboard. We'll see if anyone can get the follow-up. It drops very nicely for Pluto, who's able to put his team up by three. Ceiling to the backboard coming in handy there. That contest by Pluto getting in front of Rizzo, trying to clear it across field. But it hits the backboard and hits that uh, that kind of that side corner and drops right. straight down. Right. Pluto waiting there for it patiently. That's what you got to do. He's following up those shots. Absolutely. Such a strong read, knowing exactly what was going to happen there. 38 seconds left. Mocket has their work cut out for them here. I don't know if they've scored three points in the series so far. They're going to score three points total 
in this game. We'll see if they're able to push it out. If they haven't even got it out of their own half. Rizzo setting that one out into the corner. It's just kind of rolling on the wall. So Quinn's able to pass that one back to Pluto, who pushes it up to Espion, puts it onto the backboard. And Espion is loose in their goal, but at this point, it's all right. 15 seconds left to score three goals. This would be quite the comeback. And with the defense we've been seeing from Genesis, I will be very surprised. Espion again putting that one into the corner. Final countdown as Pluto pushes this one out. They're set up. There's Espion in goal again. Just get one more save for good measure. Espion has kept his goal clean. They're going to shut out Maka in game number five. Man, another 4-1 in this series. I can't believe how much Pluto really showed up. I mean, I expected yeah. him to be such a defensive player for this team, and he was everywhere. He showed patience. He showed poise. He was on offense. He was in the air. Like, he was all over the place and really coming and putting this team together. Absolutely. I expected that to be Espion, but Espion still doing his thing, getting up early, contesting, contesting some aerials, but he was doing it on defense this time around. Yeah, it was really... saves there he had five saves in net and just in this game like amazing stuff coming out from genesis really strong defensive team but also able to make it work on the offense good stuff by both teams just mock it falling short despite all those shots yeah and despite all the hype coming into this one hopefully they're able to clean it up as they move forward in the group stages that'll do it for us over here right now we'll be passing it back over to axel toss and the guys at the desk guys tell us what you saw thanks so much wave punk and lawler wow what a series there um I'm trying to think of like a player of the game there for Genesis, but it really feels like everyone brought something to the table. Yeah, all three showed up. Uh, Pluto, um, especially like Lawler was saying, Pluto was quiet and I've been saying that lately, but Pluto was like, no Gibbs, you know, you're wrong. Like I can be wrong. And he really showed up in this series. It definitely seems like he was much more comfortable with the squad he has now, which I think is a big reason of why he didn't need to be so defensive anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, because Lawler mentioned several times, like, he's very, very defensive, usually he's in the back. I think that's mostly because he knows he's usually, he kind of has to be back there because the players he may have played with in the past are a little more aggressive, but now he feels more comfortable coming up, and it showed. Let's take a look at the Mobile One high performance replay from that match, of course, again, a 4-1 in favor of Genesis. Quinn happens to get, like, very weird highlights. Like, this first goal to decide game one, very strange, fluky goal, I would say. Almost a save by Maka, but he always comes up with these interesting shots. I mean, Jumping Paw should have been maybe close to the net on that one. Yeah. But, I mean, we see just overall just dominance. Espion with the solo plays, getting down underneath that ball, able to kind of read, I believe that was insolences that tried to get, it was hoping, I mean, there's something he could do there. Espion mm -hmm. had full control. And then Maka's only win in the whole set was Rizzo to insolences. Great shot in the upper 90. Uh, great pass to uh, from Rizzo, but Rizzo was... He, like he was having a hard time, just shots were missing, going off every post for Mocket. I mean, again, a lot of stuff. We saw how many shots we had. Uh, we, you know, we can talk about a little more later, but they just weren't able to really connect it for maybe a few times. That tie, oh, though, in the zero seconds. Yeah. They, 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 what, with eight seconds left, they almost put it in, and then they finally did it at the zero second yeah, mark. Yeah, but then Pluto came back, and they did win that game in overtime for Genesis. And then Pluto with the bump plays and the pass, great plays from Pluto all series. Yeah, that was awesome, and I don't think that can be understated. Just the, the awareness to kind of set your teammate up and then charging for the goal and taking out the goalie. That's the kind of Rocket League I like to see. Yeah, those plays are amazing. Like, I love seeing those plays, but... Like Genesis, like we were saying, they look really good, but Mocket, like, I don't know what happened, but missed shot after missed shot, four out of the five games, Mocket had more shots than Genesis, and they only won one. Yeah, I mean, for two games, I think we said they had 10 shots and one goal. Yeah. I mean, even though Genesis has a strong defense, that, that shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a few times where Rizzo uh, was clear in front of that, he shot it right at a defender dead in front of him. If he had just taken a little bit more time, uh, had a little more patience, he probably could have put it in a place where it wasn't saveable. Um, I, I don't mean to put him out. I think uh, most of Mocket had that issue with some of their shots. I mean, 10 shots and one goal is just not what you should be seeing at this stage. Yeah. I feel like this is a bit of a trend, too. Like, I think that happened in the first matchup, too, between selfless and retrospect. We're seeing a lot of shots, but not a lot of conversions into goals. And I feel like in the Rocket League Championship Series, we're at that level where you've got to have laser shots. You've got to mm -hmm. be upper 90, you know, straight shot into the goal. He mentioned 109 kilometers per hour on one of the shots like you gotta laser it in there if you want to score goals because these are the best of the best Rocket League, Rocket League players out there. But then at the same time when they're shooting high mm -hmm. 
like go for that near angle, like the near post shot, because if it does go high, then it will bounce out right into the middle for a teammate to get a pass. Instead, they were going for far shots, like to the outside post, but then if it goes high, there's no shot attempt after that. Yeah, those deliberate misses sometimes where you hit just outside of the net, just above or just to the right, it still forces the defender to kind of be like, well, this could be going in, maybe mm -hmm. they're hard to read. And then it usually comes right back out for one of your own teammates to actually take the shot. Cool. Well, awesome couple matches so far. Next up, we have a very exciting match between I by Power Cosmic and Lucky Bounce. I know you guys are looking forward to that, and that is coming up next here at the Rocket League Championship Series. We're live in Burbank, California. Stay tuned.